Hi, this is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I'm going to start a small series on the Intersection Observer API. This is something I've been kind of trying to get my mind around and find use cases for in sites I'm building, and so I figured it was a good use case uh, to kind of teach through it here on the channel. So if this is something that you're interested in, please leave a comment. It really helps also if you subscribe, if you hit that like button. Um, those are the kinds of things that basically allow other people to see it and will motivate me to keep making these kinds of things. So if you're interested in these videos, please go ahead and do those. And uh, hopefully I will repay that with quality content for you. Today we're going to work on uh, a nav bar here that, as you can see, is transparent. But as we move towards uh, a white background, we want it to switch to something else so that you can actually read the text. If we don't do that, then the text is just going to stay white and it would be almost invisible as you move down into this lower section. And we can do that with the Intersection Observer API. So let's go ahead and jump right in. This might look the same, but you can see over here that if I start to scroll down, nothing changes. And so that nav becomes basically invisible, even though technically you can hover over the clickable uh, elements there. So what we're going to do is work on this Intersection Observer. But first of all, let me go ahead and show you kind of what markup I have and the CSS I have. Um, because uh, we're going to be referencing that in our JavaScript file. I do have this set up with Parcel. If you don't know about Parcel, go ahead and check out my last video, and uh, I'll leave a link in the description for that. But basically, you can get set up in like two minutes with Parcel and, and under. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, what it's doing is it's compiling all my SCSS down to CSS. It's um, grabbing my JavaScript file. Anything that's linked in this index.html file, it's uh, watching and... Uh, interacting with and kind of doing its its magic on. So um, check out that for sure uh, if you don't know anything about Parcel. Uh, this index.html file is fairly straightforward. We're going to grab this nav and then we're also going to use the header as our observer. And right now it's got nothing in it other than just this background image. Um, when it comes to the SCSS, we have a couple things going on. I just have a background of transparent. I'm using these uh, color variables from SCSS. You can obviously use CSS variables as well. And then what we're going to do with JavaScript is add a class called active. Here we go. And just under the active class, we're going to switch out the background, switch out the color. We're going to do the same for the links as well. And um, we're going to add this box shadow um, on the bottom of it. So you can still see it kind of against that white, white backdrop. So all we have to do is add this active class, and everything will just happen kind of automatically. And uh, if you want to know for sure that that's how everything works, we'll come in here and just say class active. And then you can see over here it's it's on permanently, which is obviously not what we want. <laughs> we want to trigger it on just when we get right about there. Okay, so I think one of the most helpful things to do is to read these MDM web docs. Um, now, especially if you're learning uh, web development, I think most of us have a, have a bad rap for both not reading documentation and not understanding it when we do. But uh, if you ever want to get better, you've got to get better at reading documentation. And so I am not pretending to understand everything in this document, but um, it is a help um, to be able to kind of just get more proficient at reading documentation, trying to implement it. And uh, most of the time, these MDM docs are just really, really helpful and walk you through it kind of step by step. So I'm going to do my best to kind of follow what they have here. And uh, if you have any questions, certainly leave them in the comments. But I would also really encourage you to look here into this documentation. OK, let's go ahead and jump into this JavaScript file. And we're going to do a few things. I'm going to leave this up just for a moment here. Um, but first thing, we need to grab both that nav and that header element. So we'll come in here and say const nav equals uh, query selector, and we're going to grab the nav, and then let's copy down and grab the header. Okay, so we've got both the nav and the header. We are mostly there. Just kidding, we haven't done anything yet. Okay, so it's going to tell us a few things here. This intersection observer API uh, documentation tells us that we need to write a new observer. That new observer is going to take something we pass into it. Uh, it, it, uh, this callback uh, function that will be run whenever it intersects. And then we need to pass an object, uh, an options object to it as well. 
So that we don't get yelled at, let's go ahead and add uh, the options object now. So I'm gonna say const, and let's name this something helpful so that if we have several of these observers, it's easy to tell which options this belongs to. So let's call it something like nav observer options. All right, and right now I am just gonna pass in nothing, but that way at least it won't yell at us. Then let's come in here and say nav observer. They're just calling it observer. You can call it whatever we want here, but we'll say is equal to new intersection observer. And then we need to pass in, remember both the callback and the options over here. And again, we can call this callback whatever we want. So let's call it something helpful. Nav observer callback. All right, this is the function we're gonna run, which we haven't created yet. Uh, that's okay. Um, so that's the function we're gonna run, and then we wanna pass in these options. All right, so pretty easy so far. We haven't really done anything yet, um, aside from saying, hey, uh, this is the intersection observer. Here's the function we're gonna run whenever this is triggered, and here are the options we're gonna pass into it. So we need to do a, a few things here. We need to actually write this function itself. So let's come up here, and again, we'll just say const uh, observer callback. This is the function we're gonna write. This is gonna take two items. It'll take whatever we're passing into it, so whatever we want it to observe, and we actually need to pass back in this uh, nav observer. So I, we could call this whatever we want. We're gonna pass in the nav, so we might as well uh, say uh, navigation or whatever, okay? That's what we're gonna pass in, and then this nav observer is the intersection observer we're gonna uh, call as well. We're just using an arrow function here, and we'll say, uh, right now let's just console log, um, I guess let's console log something helpful. So we'll call it navigation, uh, yeah, let's just console log the navigation itself. Okay, now we've got the function written, we've got the options written, we've got the new intersection observer written, but so far we're not actually observing anything. So what we need to do now is call this nav observer and we need to call observe on it. And we're gonna pass in whatever thing we want to pass into the, through here <laughs> into this function, which will be our, our nav. So let's go ahead and pass this nav in. Uh, just like this. Now, if we did everything correctly, let me come over here and pull this up. Okay, so we're getting an error, and let's see what the problem is. It says it's on line 12 down here, intersection.navobserver callback. Okay, so we've got a problem in this function here. I think what we need to do, first of all, is I'm realizing we need to pass the header in, and this will be what we pass in this way. Let's just call it like watch entry, all right, whatever we're watching. Um, so we're going to pass this header in here because that's what we're actually watching. And we'll make changes on the nav. So that might be our first thing we need to worry about. And the second thing, let's see, let's just pass in this console log the watch entry instead. Okay, there we go. Um, just kind of mixed up some of my terminology here. But you'll, you'll notice here, immediately we get this console log of the watch entry itself. It tells us all kinds of cool stuff uh, that it's observed. And as soon as you load the page, it's actually going to run your nav observer on it. And it's going to tell us a bunch of stuff. What's interesting to us right now is this is intersecting. This tells us if it's intersecting with um, the viewport, which by default is the entire uh, document. And so it is intersecting because we're watching this header itself. So what we can do is come on here and let's just go ahead and say, hey, we want to grab this first, this zero entry in this array. And so now it'll just give us that, and then inside that zero array, we can just pass here with this dot notation is intersecting. And so now it'll just say true or false. And so if we come down here, now it'll eventually say false, and you'll notice it says it as soon as we it leaves the screen up here, that, that header. So what we're gonna do is actually use that to our advantage, and we know that as soon as we start working on the document, we load the document here, it's gonna say true, it is intersecting. And so what we can do is run an if statement off of that. So let's come up here and we'll say if, and then let's go ahead and copy this up this way. If this is intersecting. 
So we can either do it like this. If it is intersecting, do something. Uh, we could also do this bang in front of it, which basically is going to give us the opposite of it. Um, so right now, I guess let's just leave it on the bang here and say if it's not intersecting, then we want to add nav, which is this const up here that we created, class list. And remember, we've got that class active. So we'll just say if it's not intersecting, so if this header is off the page, go ahead and add this class of active. Else, we want you to remove the class of active. All right, let's get rid of this console log. We don't need that anymore. So now if we come in here and start to scroll, as soon as that leaves the page, there we go. We get our active class coming on. Now that's kind of like halfway helpful, but um, what we really want to do is we want it to add about right there, something like that. This is where the options come in. Now there are several things you can pass as options. And if you come into here, uh, they, let's see, where is this? Oh, they show you right here. Uh, by default, this root area is, as you can see here, it defaults to the, the full browser viewport. Uh, I guess not the document, um, but essentially, I guess that's essentially the same thing. Um, so if you don't pass anything in, or if you pass in null, that is what it's going to do. So let's just not worry about that. The other things you can do is pass in this threshold. Let's first of all look at that. So we come in here and in this options object, say uh, threshold, and let's call it uh, 0.5, something like that. Oh, and I did a semicolon. So if we come in here, let's go back here and let's let's come in here and console log that is intersecting. And okay, we got true right now. So as we come this way, because we passed in that options object, now what it's doing is it's waiting until this header is halfway down the screen. This is what the threshold means. It's halfway down the screen, and then it's going to fire again and count it as essentially as if it's off. So we can use this to our advantage. If it's up at one, this means that it'll show intersecting only if that it's intersecting only if the entire header is in our viewport area. So as soon as we scroll at all, it triggers as false. On the other hand, if we say zero, which is the default, then it waits until the entire thing is completely off the screen to trigger again and say false. That's why our 0.5 tells us when the thing is halfway off the screen. So we can use that to our advantage and say like 0.1, something like that. And come here and at 0.1, which is right there. All right. Now the hard thing there is if you ever change the height of this header or anything like that, um, it's just a little finicky to work it that way. So we can pass another thing in. So I'm just going to leave this at threshold zero, which I think is the default anyhow. But we can pass in another thing if you come over here called root margin. The root margin um, is basically something that can offset uh, the observer. So we can come in here and say root margin. And if we say something like negative 100 pixels, something like that, and then comma, since it's uh, one of the object elements here. And then let's go ahead and get rid of this is intersecting and coming out our area up here. Now what's going to happen is when it's 100, way, 100 pixels from the bottom of the screen, which is about the size of my nav. So no matter what I do with my nav size, I don't have to worry about adjusting the threshold to like, uh, you know, 0.145 and see if maybe that's about right. I can just leave this at zero and count it as if normally it would say as soon as the whole thing is left, then go ahead and trigger what I've asked you to trigger. On the other hand, since I know this nav is about 100 anyhow, what I can do, or I want it to trigger about 100 away, is I can just pass this negative 100. And now, as soon as I get to 100, it'll come in that way. Now, I can change this to, say, 150. And then, as I come here and it's 150 away, then it will trigger. Well, we, maybe let's do something like 120. That's just about right. All right. 110, if we want something like that. Since we know the height of the nav, that means we can move this head around however we want. And whenever it gets to where the nav is 120, 110 pixels away from this lower area, it'll immediately trigger and add that class. So hopefully it was a fun project and uh, you can see how useful this would be in some kind of production site. And the other cool thing is rather than using like a scroll, um, 
uh, event listener. A scroll event listener is going to trigger every you know millisecond. Basically, it's just watching, 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 and then uh, finally it will. You can say when it when the nav or when the header is this far down from the top of the screen, all this kind of stuff. Worrying with top scroll, but it's a lot of CPU power for something that uh, Intersection Observer can do pretty naturally. Intersection Observer, as we've seen, triggers basically when you first load the page, and you can actually tell it not to as well. But um, but in this case, we want it to because we want to know if it's if uh, if we should have this class on or not, and then it triggers whenever you tell it to. So two triggers. We come back. It removes it. Come back. It removes it. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments. Again, I, I'd really encourage you to read the documentation, even just for the practice of getting better at reading documentation and kind of filtering through that. Come up with your own example and uh, play with it. If you do have any questions, please let me know. And again, if you can subscribe and like the video, that'll be a big help to the channel. So thanks so much, and I will see you next time. Happy coding.